Hey guys, Aniso here, and in today's video we take a look at my Dawnbreaker POS5 hard support gameplay. We are laning with an anti-mage against the Pudge and Earth Spirit lane. Usually Dawnbreaker wants ranged heroes such as Drow Ranger for example, or like Morphling, but in this case my carry picked anti-mage, there's not much I can do. So we try to adapt for the situation and I feel like anti-mage just needs a really good laning stage early on. All this hero needs is a lot of babysitting the early levels and so the items I try to buy are to win level 1 and 2. We buy Orb of Venom and we buy a lot of region. We also buy a salve so I can salve up the anti-mage if needed and then we basically try to play as aggressive as possible early on. There was a little bit of trading going on, the enemies used some spells onto me but not the biggest deal. I had to use a tango and then I immediately bought another set of tango just so we have enough region to sustain early. Right now I feel like as long as anti-mage gets free farm I am fine but I also want to position myself in the middle of the wave and every time they get close I just try to like double star breaker them. There's not a lot they can do and earth spirit overextended a little bit so we just get first blood here. This is basically the perfect situation. I can just bully out the patch by myself. Like Dawnbreaker has really good base stats early on, and then Anti-Mage can free farm the wave. And then as long as Patch is solo, I just want to hit him all the time. And here I double Starbreaker, but I got cancelled by the Earth Spirit. Not the biggest deal, we still got some damage on the patch. And I then I also try to deny with my Anti-Mage. Especially as a high damage melee hero such as Dawnbreaker, it is really important that you also deny. Now we hit our level 2 timing. This is when Dawnbreaker is probably the strongest hero in Dota. Like His two early game spells combined are crazy. And as soon as the enemies get out of position, we can just kill them again. Like we try to kill the Earth Spirit, he still has no TP. So yeah, we just get a double kill this way. I'm trying to block the patch and not try to steal the last hit so Anti-Mage gets more gold. And then I immediately try to head for a pull. Like the kill attempt pushed the wave. And I'm waiting for 53 to pull the big camp and also stack it at the same time. This will deny the next whole wave. This is pretty important. This is probably what will have won us the lane. Um, like Earthbird still has no TP, he can't be here soon. The whole wave gets denied and I position myself in front so Pudge can't get close to the creeps. Uh, so this way he will miss the whole creep wave. Now Earthbird TPs back in, he uses roll, but we are not scared of him. Especially after he used roll. We can just run at him again, I use my mango and we just kill him. Like now he died three times, he will not come back into the lane anymore, he's probably mad by this point. And yeah, from now on the lane is won. Um, I feel like anti-mage can just free farm against Pudge, there's no way he needs my help against the solo Pudge, like in a 1v1 anti-mage would just beat Pudge just because of his mana burn. Um, Pudge has really low armor also. So what I'm doing here is to unblock the pull camp, and then here I tried to stack, it was a little bit late. Um, but we unblocked the small camp, and basically we just want to give anti-mage free farm. At 17 seconds we tried to go for the small camp pull. I kinda misplayed here, I tried to pull half the wave, I only got the range creep, but not the biggest deal. Getting half the wave would probably be a little bit better, but still, denying the range creep is like one third of the experience of the wave denied and also the lane will pull back just by the fact that we don't have a range creep but they do and right now i basically just want to stack the small camp i'm waiting for 53 and then my goal is to pull the lane this way patch will lose a whole wave of experience and there's nothing he can do about it but then i looked at the minimap and i decided that i don't need to help anti-mage um, as long as earthbird is bottom like anti-mage can win 1v1 against patch anytime. So I just want to pressure bot. Together we are pretty strong. We have Enigma stun, we have my stun and my slow. Also Death Prophet is pretty good early on. And Lifestealer, he doesn't really offer anything besides just hitting people. Same for the Earth Spirit who's still level 2. He's also really weak, he doesn't have any game so we just kill Lifestealer and Io here. So basically now we have won the top lane and then we rotate bot and we have also won the bot lane. From now on, I'm thinking about either staying here 
or playing around mid, but in mid there's Morphling, there's, there's nothing I can do against the Morphling. The Morphling can always just waveform out, and I know this. So my goal is to play here and make the enemies also play here. Like as long as we put pressure on the bot lane, the enemies will also be bot. And this means that anti-mage has complete free farm top against the patch. So all I'm doing is basically just bullying out the enemies. There's not a lot of kills happening right now. It is basically, I want to scare the enemies. So I run Lifestealer, and as soon as he commits onto me, I just get back. And then at this point, DP also told me that they are fine bot. Which basically means I'm not needed top, I'm not needed in the mid lane, and I'm not needed bot. So the thing I'm trying to do next is to do some stacks in the jungle, and then probably try to get some farm myself. Like getting levels on Dawnbreaker early on and also getting an early Holy Locket is really good. It increases your fighting potential by a large margin. Um, so we try to stack the engines here and then I just head towards the top jungle. But my goal is to always look at the lanes and see if I'm needed. I will also get a TP pretty soon with the courier, just so I'm ready again to just TP into lanes when I'm needed. Especially on the anti-mage lane. Like, all I'm doing right here is keeping an eye onto the minimap and see if anti-mage is still free farming. If anti-mage wouldn't free farm right now, I would definitely not jungle. Like, I'm only jungling because I know that I don't have any more impact in all the free lanes. That's the only reason I'm allowed to jungle right now. If any of the lanes would need any help, I would not jungle. Also for the jungling itself, Usually you try to hit two camps with the hammer at once. I just haven't played Dawnbreaker for a few days, so I kind of messed up here a little bit. So this is how you usually want to do it. You want to hit one camp, you run to the other camp, and then you run back, and this way the hammer will hit all camps, and then you basically just Starbreaker on all creeps. It needs some practice to do correctly, and as I said, I also messed up a little bit. But honestly, it's not, it's not the biggest deal. Usually you don't want to farm camps as Dawnbreaker anyway. Like if you're allowed to farm one or two camps, it's it's nice. But most of the time you just have more impact playing lanes. It is basically just in this game that I'm farming jungle because I'm not needed in any lane. Like right now I could probably even go mid right now. Like Void Spirit is not mid for a single wave, so there's probably one wave that I could have farmed there. Um, but Void Spirit is now back, so it's not the biggest deal. After spending all my resources on the camps, I just went back to base and then I tried to look for a fight again. Like There is a fight going on bot, they're chasing Enigma, so I'm TPing there, I also see that Void Spirit is coming. If Void Spirit wouldn't rotate, I would probably not TP there. But with Void Spirit, we can get some return kills there. We get the IO, and then we also get the bonus kill on the Earth Spirit, and most importantly, we have defended the tower. If we think about our lineup, we have an anti-mage. Anti-mage is probably one of the best heroes in the late game. Especially against the enemy team. They don't have any catch. Like they have Earth Spirit, who has a silence, but that's it. Like this is basically the only catch for anti-mage, and as soon as anti-mage has meta style, he can just dispel the silence. So they have no way of killing anti-mage ever in this game. So I know as long as we play passive and we defend objectives while anti-mage is free farming. We will win the game at some point. Like, we don't need to do aggressive moves. We just need to wait until like 20, 25 minutes until Antimage has some items. So, all we need to do is to chill. Right now, I hit level 6. I still am not needed in any lane, so I can farm some more jungle camps. But I always look at the minimap to see if there's any fight I can join with my ultimate. Usually how you play Dawnbreaker is that you try to play away from your team when you have ultimate, but you play with your team when you don't have ultimate. It is kind of like a Spectre with Horned. You have global potential to join every teamfight in the game, so as long as you have your ultimate up, you don't need to run around with your teammates, because you can join anyway. But when your ultimate is on cooldown, you want to try to play with your teammates together, because you don't have the global potential to join. But right now we have the ulti up, so we can just farm some more jungle camps until we are needed at some point at the map. 
My goal right now is to get the Holy Locket as soon as possible. Like, Holy Locket is such an incredible item on Dawnbreaker. The amount of heal you can put out with your ultimate is insane. Like here, as you can see, I'm checking if I am needed in the fight. But I feel like they don't need my help right now. Death Prophet is fine. Lifestealer used his ultimate and is running away. So basically what I want to do is to pressure the free lane. There's a solo Io here. Like, I'm not scared of Io at all. As long as Io is just solo, I can run at this guy and he can't do anything. I don't want to overextend, I just want to use my two spells. And then as soon as my two spells are up again, I just use my W. And then with the help of the Anti-Mage that is nearby, we can just kill him. Anti-Mage is not in any trouble here. He's fine, he's already level 10 at 11 minutes into the game, which is crazy. He also already has his Battle Fury complete. Like he rushed Brown Boots Battle Fury. Um, we managed to finish the Holy Locket. Like we split the Arcane Boots. So we can finish the Holy Locket here. And then same thing again. I'm trying to play around the lane that no one wants to play in right now. Like mid lane is free. None of our heroes is there. I have my ultimate up. So we can just push out the wave while the enemies are grouped up. So we can force some other rotations. Also we just get more free farm. Like getting items on Dawnbreaker is really good and when there's any free lane that none of your teammates wants to farm, as soon as you have your ultimate, always be there and farm the wave. And there was not a lot of happening for the next 30 seconds, so I just skip forward here. And the enemies grouped up mid, they tried to push the mid tower and I tell my team to defend the tower. Basically I'm trying to be the frontliner here, we have 11 charges on the holy locket. So I try to take some damage here that I can counter here with the locket and then we ulti in. I just throw my hammer on top of Io and Patch. We just kill them. Now we also kill Earthspirit. Now it's basically 3 against 1. Antimage is also joining so it's 4 against 1. We basically just keep chasing the Morphling. And after some chasing we just get the kill on him as well. For some weird reason he's running towards us. I don't know, maybe he would have survived if he ran to the left. Um, but it doesn't really matter. Like Our goal is to get the tower right now, this is the important part. Anti-Mage still has free farm, he's not scared of anything right now. He can join some kills if he wants to, he can just farm the triangle right now. Um, the enemies are running at us. I try to use my spells and then disengage all the time. Like here I throw my hammer and then I just run away. This way my hammer will slow them when they try to chase. I use the locket and we just disengage. Meanwhile anti-mage is still free farming. And we are basically just trying to chill until our ultimates are ready again. For my item choice the next item I choose is Aghanims. Aghanims on Dawnbreaker combined with locket is just the most broken heal in the game. It is crazy. It will make your ultimate last longer. You can also instantly cancel the ultimate just to be there as like an AoE stun. But the most important thing is it gives 60% evasion to everyone in your ultimate. This combined with the fact that your ultimate heals more per pulse with the locket is just crazy. Basically once you have Aghanims and locket and you ulti on top of someone they can't die. Like it is nearly impossible that they die and you will see this later. So for the next few minutes there's not a lot happening in the game. We are still trying to chill. Like we know that our timing is once anti-mage has Mantor and maybe one more item. Like right now he has Yashar and half the Mantor style. So we are still want to chill. We also want to wait my Aghanim. So I'm basically just pushing waves that no one is in right now while I'm having my ultimate ready. I'm paying attention if there's any fights that I need to join with the ultimate but basically if the enemies are not pressuring right now, we basically just want to chill. Then right here, while I tried to push the next wave, I got rolled on by Earthspirit and also Patch ulted me. Not the biggest deal, we have nearly 2k HP. I can just use the locket and then spam my spells onto them. Like, I'm so tanky. It is crazy. They relocate in. And then here, we had Black Hole. I don't know why Enigma wasn't just using the Black Hole. It took a long time here. But then finally Enigma used the black hole, I used my ultimate on top. Um, they relocate out the Morphling. Unfortunately I die but we still get the Earth Spirit. 
if Enigma would be a little bit faster, we would probably also kill Io and then also kill Morphling. But this way we get the kill onto Lifestealer and Earthspirit, which is fine. Morphling has to TP out. Honestly, it doesn't really matter if I die. I'm only plus 5. But obviously I don't want to feed kills. Because I'm pretty farmed for a plus 5 right now. But if we get kill on the carry or the mid lane, I'm definitely completely fine to die for this. The last two minutes afterwards, we basically were just chilling. We didn't do anything besides everyone just hitting creeps. The enemies didn't do anything. We just hitting creeps. Enemies just hitting creeps. Um, which is completely fine for us. Like, I'm getting close to my Aghanims. Also, as you can see, Antimate is crazy farmed. He has nearly 13k net worth at 20 minutes. Our next objective right now is the bot tier 2 tower. Which we should try to take so we can also get the outpost. Um, we already put some wards into the enemy jungle, and as I said before, we got the ultimate ready, so we play away from the team, we push out other waves, and when there's a team fight happening, we can just join with the ultimate. If you pay close attention to the minimap, they are relocating right now, there's a fight going on, and basically I just try to ulti in the middle of everyone. Maybe I should have used my ultimate like one or two seconds earlier, but it still turned out really well, we get the kill on Io and Earth Spirit. Also, Anti-Mage is killing the patch. We also get the kill onto the Lifestealer. No, Morphling morphed into a Void Spirit and he waveforms away. So at this point it is pretty hard to kill him. He still has the Manta style. So we basically just give up the chase. And then we go back to farming and taking the objectives. That's what we are here for. Anti-Mage is hitting the bot tier 2 tower. I'm pushing out the other wave while the enemies are dead. And then I try to look to join my team as soon as possible again, because the ultimate is on cooldown. Also don't forget to buy the wards and the sentries, as you can see here. There we go, we run towards the team because we don't have ultimate. There's a fight breaking out. I feel like we need to disengage, so I just use my hammer to get away. Death Prophet also committed her ultimate. We're pretty close to the tier 2 tower. So we try to run at the tower. While we have the DP ulti, she still has yield, so she's fine. She's not overextending. We get the kill onto the Earth Spirit. My ultimate is also up in 15 seconds. By the way, I'm trying to communicate this cooldowns to my team every time I can. I also put a ward around the area that we play in. Like I know we play around the tower, so I just put another ward, and then also we de-ward. Then DP gets hooked, and I try to save her with the ultimate. It was really close, with like one more use out of the spirit siphon, DP would probably live. Um, but it was really close, and then we basically just chased the Pudge, who is the safe kill. And then our void spirit and DP died, so we just disengaged here. We overextend a little bit, but it's still fine. Anti-Mage is the carry. He's our win condition. As long as he doesn't die, we don't mind when someone in our team dies, as long as we get some traits. Anti-Mage is the strongest guy here, and the most important one. And that's the one I want to protect at all costs. We are basically hitting the tier 2 tower a little bit, but once they come, we just disengage again. Because we don't have cooldowns. We don't have Black Hole, we don't have my ultimate, so we don't want to take any team fight right now. We basically just want to wait for the spells to be up again. And once we get our ultimate, that's when we try to take another fight. I'm pushing out the mid wave again. They they go on us. Here it looks like we might die, but then I just use a clutch ultimate and as I said before, Aghanims with Locket is just crazy. I can stay in the air for so long and anti-mage gets zero damage because of the evasion. I barely make it out here with pretty good hammer. And we basically just win the team fight completely. I TP base just because I'm so low. I could probably just stay mid and lifesteal myself. Uh, TPing base was probably kind of a misplay, but not the biggest deal. Like We killed all of them and we can just siege the tier 2 and maybe the tier 3 right now. We also have DP ulti. Like my team is chasing pretty long and here um, Anti-Mage nearly got a Rampage and Void Spirit stole the kill so he's a little bit mad, both of them are dropping their items for a second but 
but thank god no one is tilting so <laughs> they just keep playing as normal we just siege the towers the bot tower is low so we just run bot we also get the kill on earth spirit Then we get the tier 3 tower, Morphling is still dead, Pudge is still dead, so we are not scared at all, we just hit the Rex. By the way, for the item choice, my next item is Halberd. Halberd is pretty good on Dawnbreaker in general, because it amplifies our, our heal with the passive, with our crit, which translates to more healing for the team. Also, just disarming the Lifestealer or the Morphling in this game is also pretty solid. In the old guide, I was usually buying like Guardian Greaves right now, but honestly, after playing a lot of Dawnbreaker games, I feel like getting more heal than we already got with Aghanims and Holy Locket is probably just overkill. Like, you don't need more heal than this. So, at this point, I usually just try to get some more utility items, such as Halberd or like Lotus Orb, maybe Foster of Glimmer Cape, whatever we need in this situation. Here I see my DP getting chased by the Lifestealer. I don't want to commit my ultimate, like, DP is pretty tanky by herself. We pick up the rune and then there's a teamfight starting. I tried to save the DP here, she got vesseled, so I want to give her a bonus evasion. My ultimate was kind of a waste here, but still it managed to disengage the enemies, so... This way we get a kill onto Earth Spirit, which is fine. Anti-Mage also picked up the... Wisp after the relocate, we get the kill onto Patch. Anti-Mage also managed to solo kill the Nikes, like the Lifestealer, just because he is so farmed. He has 20k net worth right now, compared to the second highest in the game being Morphling with 13k. It's just crazy, like this is the best Anti-Mage free game he ever had in his life probably. And then from here on, we just end the game. Like We can get the Rex and then just hit the Ancient and finish the game. So overall, I feel like we played this game pretty clean. We identified our win condition at the start of the game, which is anti-mage, and then all our game plan just evolved around anti-mage getting as much farm as possible. Like we played away from him in the early game, just so he has free farm and the enemies are also playing away from him. And this basically just gave him the freest game of his life. So really hope you guys enjoyed my thought process. If you want to learn more about Dawnbreaker, you can also check out the guide I made a few months ago. It is still up to date besides the mechanism guarding grease thing that I talked about already. But besides that, the guide is still up to date and there is probably a lot you can learn if you want to play more Dawnbreaker. Have a nice day. See you.